Hello everyone, in this video I'll be taking a look at Kubuntu 20.10, which is codenamed Groovy Gorilla. Kubuntu 20.10 is an interim release which is supported for the next 9 months. In this release we have the KDE Plasma 5.19 desktop. Unfortunately, Kubuntu narrowly missed the KDE 5.20 desktop, so unfortunately this desktop is out of date at time of release. Although to be honest, I'm not so happy about the 5.20 desktop. I prefer the 5.19. But anyway, in this release we get the Linux kernel 5.8, which provides compatibility with the latest generation of CPUs, the AMD Zen 3, Intel Tiger Lake, and Power 10. We also have the Mesa Graphics Drivers version 20.2.0, and the option to install the NVIDIA Graphics Drivers version 455, which is one version ahead of Kubuntu 2004 at time of recording. One of the fancy new features with Ubuntu 20.10 is the ability to integrate with Active Directory, and this would be really useful for Windows-heavy enterprise environments. Unfortunately, Kubuntu has no such feature. There is an option provided in the Ubuntu Ubiquiti installer to use Active Directory, but that feature does not exist in Kubuntu. But that is not to say it is a complete loss with improvements with Windows integration. Because one of the underlying improvements with Samba 4.12 is the usage of GNU TLS encryption, which means it's about 4-6 to six times faster for sending files over SMB3. I have to say I'm a huge fan of the KDE Plasma desktop, although my choice of operating system seems to keep flip-flopping between Kubuntu and KDE Neon. KDE Neon gives you a bleeding edge Plasma desktop, whereas Kubuntu can lag behind on the Plasma desktop but gives you a more up-to-date operating system, because Kubuntu uses the, both the interim and long-term support releases, whereas KDE Neon is stuck on the long-term support release of Ubuntu. But that's not to say you can't manually add some of the enhancements of the newer Ubuntu releases, like newer kernel, newer applications. For example, you can use Snap applications, which would be more bleeding edge than the dev packages. So yeah, being stuck on the long-term support release doesn't necessarily mean you're stuck two years in the past. The KDE Plasma desktop is quite heavily developed, and there is quite a selection of KDE applications to go along with it. Although I do notice that GNOME is starting to catch up on the choice of applications now, so you know, maybe there's not a huge amount between them. I'm looking here at one of the new features from the Plasma 5.19 desktop, the new chart widgets which can allow you to add a variety of hardware sensors to the desktop. And you can choose between different chart types. And of course one of the great things about the Plasma desktop is the ability to download new features. It really is quite a flexible desktop. One of the underlying changes with Ubuntu 2010 is that IP tables has been replaced by NF tables. Debian made this change about a year ago on their system, but they allowed you to directly utilize NF tables. But in Ubuntu, they would prefer you use the uncomplicated firewall for your control over the system firewall. There's UFW for the command line version or GUFW for a graphical version. Although it's not an absolute requirement to mess with the firewall, but I want to point out one of the underlying changes in this release. Going back to some of the other changes in this release of KDE, there's better control over the file search. I think they used to call it by their application name, Baloo, although that's not very descriptive. What is Baloo? I'm sure it was a character in some sort of children's cartoon, isn't it, or Disney cartoon? I forgot what it was now off the top of my head, but anyway, it might be more understandable to read the term file search, and that's exactly what we've got here. And there's better control over the configuration, so if you don't want to search a particular folder, so you can select stop searching a particular folder, and let's say I don't want to search the scripts folder under my documents, so I can just add that and apply, and that will no longer be indexed. So if I went across to see something in that folder, uh, what have I got? So scripts, um, got loads of old bash tutorials, uh, count hashes, so let's see if I can find the file count hashes. No, I can't. But I can still find a file from the folder above. So like my video notes, there we are. That's more of a usability change, although that feature always used to exist. Under account details, you can now choose from a wider selection of avatars, specifically photo avatars. 
there's a few different sort of photos included. I suppose that does remind me of a certain other operating system from Microsoft. And sticking in the settings a bit longer, one of the differences between Ubuntu to KDE Neon is the privacy. So a lot of other KDE releases will send, or sorry, provide you the option to send anonymous telemetry information to the KDE developers. But that option has been removed in Kubuntu and you would instead send error reports directly to Canonical. And one last menu to mention is the accessibility features. Now this is something I don't normally look at, but I think it's worthy just having a look through this because some people might actually be interested in uh, what kind of things exist under the accessibility features. So you've got the sticky keys, you've got keyboard filters to slow down pressing of keys, you can use some gestures to activate certain features, changing the mouse navigation speed, and there is a screen reader. Let's have a look back through Dolphin. So opening up picture, well, you've got Gwen view for an image viewer, or you can use Ocular, which Ocular can view quite a lot of different files, not just constrained to images, but also documents. So let's zoom into a section of that image. I want to zoom into there. Well, that's 800% zoom, but you know, it's still a bit fuzzy. What, how far can I zoom in? Um, yeah, you can actually zoom into like 10,000%. So the limit of zooming has now been uplifted from 1600% to 10,000% at least on this image. So that was a new feature in the Plasma 5.19 desktop. And I have to say one of the things I do like about this desktop is the Dolphin file manager. I should have mentioned that is probably one of my favorite applications, just the, how flexible this thing is really. The tab browsing, the terminal window, the split screen. The choice of desktop wallpapers includes a lot of the older KDE Plasma wallpapers. So KDE developers include a different wallpaper in every release, and some of them do look really good. That's the default for this release, Flow. But I opted to use one of the photos that the Kubuntu developers have included. I chose to use Wayland this time around, although it's not officially supported, but it was easy enough to install I think there's a package, I think the package is called something like Plasma Wayland. I'm talking about application install, so you've got a couple of choices for application installers. You've got the Moon Package Manager, or the Discover Software Center. When you're searching for applications in Discover, one of the notable differences between this and the Ubuntu Software Center is that dev packages are favored over and above the snap packages, so that... Oh, just lost my chance to read what that was, but uh, yeah, so 15 meg, uh, source, Ubuntu Groovy Universe, and if I read further down, there is a snap version of the application. Again, you're trolling me with these reviews in the way, that's what I was trying to read. The snap package there, so it's quite a lot larger. But snaps have their purpose, and I know there's a bit of a split in the community whether snaps should be in existence or not. But personally, I find them useful. and They do have a time and a place. But that does not necessarily mean that I would install every application via a snap package. So that's was a look at Kubuntu 2010. I have to say this release has functioned perfectly. And I know that we missed out on the release of the KDE Plasma 5.20 desktop. Although honestly, it's good to go back to this and remind myself of what Kate used to be like when the theming integrated a lot better with the desktop. I don't know what they've done in the 5.20 release. But yeah, that is a, a little bit broken there. But yeah, the choice of theming that you've got within KDE is just quite amazing, really. You can really make the desktop anything you want. There's lots of widgets you can add to the desktop. You can get more online. There's just so much you can do with it, really. And I think this is the most customizable desktop that is available in Linux. Well, thanks for watching, and I'll see you all later.